So we're going to look at torques now. Now before we've said that a torque is a turning force, you already intuitively know quite a lot about torques. So if you imagine these doors above, you know which door is easiest to open. In these diagrams, the little rectangles represent the hinges and the circle is the handle. So you know that in order to open the door, it's easiest to open it if the handle is a long way from the hinges. You also know that in order to open this door, you need to apply a force perpendicular to the door. If you apply a force parallel to the door, then that's not going to start at opening. So formally, how we write down an equation to describe the torque is that the torque is equal to R cross F. Now in this vector equation, R represents the radius vector, which goes from the pivot point, so that's the line connecting the hinges for our door, to the point where the force is applied. So for our door, the force will be applied on the handle. So the R vector is equal to the length from the pivot point to the handle. F is just the size of the applied force. So because this is a cross product, we can calculate the magnitude of the torque using the formula torque is equal to RF sine phi, where phi is the angle between that radius vector and the force. So if we're considering the example of the door and we pull the door out of the screen in order to open it, then the angle between the radius vector and the force is equal to 90 degrees. And so we've got times sine 90, which is just times one. Now, considering the units, as torque is the multiplication of the radius and the force, it's got units equal to newton meters, the units for force times the units for distance. Now, for torque, we never write the units as joules. So work was also calculated as the distance times the force, but in that case, it was a dot product. So it was a scalar and the units were given as joules. Don't give the units as joules for torque, give the units as Newton meters. Now, technically, because torque is a vector, it does have a direction. So in the example above with the door, we can use our right hand rule to work out the direction of the torque. So align your fingers up with the radius vector from the hinges to the handle and then curl them out of the screen. And you'll see that this gives you your thumb pointing down the screen. So in this case, the torque is formally in the down the screen direction. However, often with talks, we don't state the direction as formally as this. Often we'll start to talk about which direction they'll start rotating in. So an alternate way to give this talk is to say that if we were looking at the door from above, then the door would start to open in a clockwise direction. Now, when we're considering forces, we can add all the forces up to get the net force. Exactly the same thing happens with torques. If we have multiple torques acting on the body, we can just sum all these torques to get the net torque on the body. So what we're going to do now is have a look at an example. We'll consider a setup like this one, where we have a rod and a pivot point, which hopefully I can get it to balance from. Here. here and we'll consider what torques we get if we add masses at different distances along this rod. So the question, calculate the net torque when the 50 gram mass is added 40 centimeters to the right of the pivot point of a massless rod. Part two, how much mass needs to be added to the point 20 centimeters from the left of a pivot point in order for the rod to be in equilibrium. Okay, so let's start by drawing a diagram. Here's our rod pivoted about the center. Now, if it's pivoted about the center, it doesn't actually matter if it's massless or not, as the torque caused by this side will balance the torque caused by this side. And what we're told is that we add a 50 gram mass 40 centimeters to the right of the pivot point. So here we go. 
This is the vector r, which shows us how far away the force is. And we've got that r is equal to 40 centimeters. And then the force is down like this, force, and it's caused by the weight of the hanging mass. So it's mg. And so to calculate the torque, we've got this is r cross f. Now let's have a go with our right hand rule. If you point your fingers in the direction of R of your right hand and then curl them down in the direction that F is pointing, you can see that your thumb is pointing into the screen and that these two are at 90 degrees to each other. So this is going to be equal to RF sine 90 and which is just RF and so this will be equal to R, which is 40 centimeters, so 0 0.40 meters times F, and F is just mg. So this is equal to 50 grams times 9.8. 50 grams is 0 0.05 kilograms. So this is equal to 0 0.49 newtons. So this is times 0 0.49. And so this is equal to 0 0.196 newton meters which is 0 0.20 newton meters and like we said with our right hand rule our thumb was pointing into the screen so we can say that this is into the screen or alternatively you could say the rod would start to turn clockwise Okay, so that was part one. In part two, we're now going to try and balance this torque with a mass which we will place R2 20 centimeters here. So R2 is going this direction and we've got F2 which is equal to M2G pulling down like this. So again, with your right hand rule, if you point your fingers in the direction of R2 and then curl them down to F2, your thumb is pointing out of the screen. So this torque is going to be out of the screen. So it will balance this torque, but we're going to need to work out what mass we need to balance it exactly. So we have that the torque is equal to RF and sine 90 again, these two vectors are at 90 degrees to each other. So this is equal to R2 times M2G. And we want this to be equal in magnitude to this one, so 0 0.196. So this tells us that M2 is equal to 0 0.196 over R2, which is 0 0.20, because it's 20 centimeters, times 9.80. And solving that, we get 0 0.10. So that's in kilograms. So we can say, well, M2 is equal to 100 grams. So because it's twice as close, we need to put twice as much mass there to balance the torque caused by the first hanging mass over here. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to calculate torques and shows you that these cross products usually aren't too scary because generally, we are dealing with things which are at 90 degrees to each other or which we can draw and think about relatively easily.